Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. John Ebert. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tumor ablation is a minimally invasive technique used to treat solid cancers. Using CT, MRI, or ultrasound, an interventional radiologist places special probes into the tumor to burn or freeze the cancer. While tumor ablation doesn't treat the underlying cause of the disease, it can help to relieve pain and prolong survival for some cancer patients. And here to discuss is Mayo Clinic radiologist, Dr. Matthew Kallstrom. Welcome to the program, Dr. Kallstrom. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Glad to be here. So burning and freezing, that sounds exactly like what you should do to cancer. Is, yes. Is that an accurate uh, way to describe what's happen- happening with tumor ablation? Yes. So what we do use is, you know, CT or MR or ultrasound guidance and monitoring to watch these devices go into tumors, for example, in the liver or in a kidney. With that, we can see that the device is placed accurately into the tumor. And then with freezing, we can actually see ice in the body and we can tell exactly what we're treating and what we're trying to avoid. With heat, it's a little bit harder to see, but we can also very proactively determine what we're going to treat And with that, get good outcomes in in terms of treatment of these cancers. Yeah, they're different ends of the spectrum, burning and freezing. They are, (laughs) yeah. But with both of them, hopefully you end up getting rid of some of that cancer or all of that cancer. Does it disappear or does does the body absorb it? Or what happens when you use ablation on a tumor? That's a good question. You know, a lot of patients ask that question. So if you freeze it, for example, what happens is the cells are destroyed. They, They fracture, they fall apart. And the components of that cell then are absorbed by the inflammatory system. And that's one of the reasons why people are really exploring whether or not combinations of ablation with immunotherapy might be a new opportunity in terms of treatment of cancers. So a couple things. If you go into that tumor, how long do you freeze? So I imagine you freeze the tumor and then that area of freeze sort of grows out the longer you sort of freeze, right? And right. How, how long do you know how to go and how wide is the tumor? Do you have a real good sense when you go in there? Yeah, we could take an example. So if you took a patient that has metastatic disease that went to their lung, for example, colorectal cancer, pretty common scenario for patients, unfortunately. What we can do is put a couple probes in or around a tumor. We often pick them up like chopsticks, put probes adjacent to it. Those probes have a certain amount of ice that they'll produce. Um, Often tumors that are less than a centimeter, for example, you know, half an inch or so, will generate ice that's about three or four inches in diameter to completely cover it. And when we're watching with CT, we can watch it grow. It takes about 10 minutes to freeze it. Temperatures are starting at about minus 160 centigrade. At the edges, it's zero. So that ice is very cold. And that temperature, that cold temperature is necessary to kill the tissue. We freeze it a couple times. The Overall procedure, for example, treating a lung cancer will be about 45 minutes. So lung cancer, one of the types of cancer you can treat with uh, tumor ablation. What are other, I mean, any tumor in the body or what are you usually using it for? Yeah, it's, it seems that way, like it's almost anywhere. We actually do treat tumors anywhere from, you know, intracranial or brain tumors all the way to the feet. So it really depends on the application and what you're trying to treat most commonly We treat lung cancers, metastatic disease. We treat liver cancers, both primary and metastatic disease. We treat small renal cancers. So those applications are very common. And as you started off talking about palliation, treating patients that have might might have a greater burden of disease and we're trying to treat pain, we'll focally treat that. Maybe not all of their disease, but the ones that are painful. So we talked about you know, heating and freezing, and uh, you also have radio frequency and microwave and laser. I imagine the science is moving pretty rapidly in these spaces. Are we doing clinical trials to figure out freezing versus ultrasonic versus, you know, burning and these sorts of things? I mean, we're, we're figuring out what, what treatment is best for what tumor. Is that where we are in the science right now? Yeah, I think that's a good description. If you took one example, like a liver cancer, um, it turns out that heat is best in the liver. You can prevent complications like bleeding. Or if, if you froze it, the risk of bleeding is probably mm-hmm. a little higher because you don't coagulate those blood vessels, and so there's a higher risk of bleeding. Sure. So these technologies are tailored to the organ. Mm-hmm. They're also tailored to the type of cancer that you're trying to treat. So I would say what's where the research is right now is, one, new technologies like microwave-only became available in the past five years or so. A lot of advances in terms of predictability. If you look at um, other technologies like cryoablation, 
larger ice, faster ice, colder ice. Um, and then probably the most important thing is how well do we do clinically? And that goes to clinical trials. We've run a couple of clinical trials in treating patients that have metastatic disease in the lung. We've looked at patients that have painful metastatic disease to see how well that works. Um, we're now going to go after liver cancers and see exactly how well do patients do in terms of their outcome and survival. So do you use this, um, do you use tumor ablation along with chemotherapy and radiation? Is it just one of the arsenal of ways you battle cancer? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, it's uh, one of the tools that are used to try and treat patients that it might have a particular problem. Um, for example, we have multiple communications with radiation oncology and our medical oncology colleagues to talk about what's the right therapy for that individual patient. And sometimes, even though both therapies might on the surface be equivalent for that particular patient, maybe it's best to go with radiation first or ablation first depending on what you're thinking about in terms of their long-term survival and risks and complications associated with what you're trying to do. So you talked about multi-modality kind of modality therapy, and when does an oncologist call you in? Will they sometimes say, let's shrink it a little bit with the chemo, and then let's call you in to ablate it? Will those sort of things happen? Yeah, so you'll see patients that might, for the first time, present with metastatic disease in their liver, for example. question is, what do you do? Do you do surgery? If it's really deep in the liver, maybe you lose too much liver and you'd be better off doing a focal therapy and preserving options for the future like radiation therapy. So it'll be often, at, depending on early presentation, trying to eradicate all of their cancer, go to cure or remission. Might be later on in terms of palliation. Maybe they have something that's growing in the presence of other disease that's under control. Um, and again, for palliation, treating patients that might have symptoms. And what is the research, what's the future hold? I mean, it seems like what you're doing then is you're trying to figure out, you take this patient with this tumor, and then the other variable is you use the radio frequency or the laser, you know, burn freeze. How yeah. do you start to figure out after a while? Is that just what the future holds, is narrowing in the windows of what you use when? Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of variables, mm -hmm. a lot of different types of cancers, a lot of different types of technologies. I think where that where we're going in terms of trying to understand better is if you went after a particular type of problem that a patient might have, can we improve their survival? One, so we're looking at lung cancer, metastatic disease treatment. Can we have an impact on their uh, quality of life? And so you have to measure that and compare it, for example, to surgery. Is it better to resect that early or to do ablation early for, potentially for some patients? And with the evolving background of how well patients do in terms of their systemic therapies with medical oncology, that paradigm continues to shift. And so we're starting to think that preservation of tissue is a real key part of this. You know, for example, if you do multiple lung surgeries, you can get to the point where somebody might be a pulmonary cripple. You know, now they're really impacted in terms of their quality of life. But if you are very strategic in terms of when you sequence treatments, you can preserve quality of life. You can get equivalent or better outcomes. We've been talking about tumor ablation with Mayo Clinic radiologist, Dr. Matthew Kallstrom. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.